Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Firewood at the Furnace. Uh, last Wednesday, if you noticed, there was no video. It is the very first Wednesday that I have ever missed in the history of this channel. Uh, things were a little hectic. Things were a little crazy. Uh, Val was out of town for a bachelorette weekend for a few days, so I was flying solo with the kids. Uh, I do want to recognize my mom for she was helping out a little bit, helping me run the kids back and forth to where they needed to be. Uh, sometimes they were both going separate ways and I'm only one person, so I needed a little bit of help. So thanks mom uh, for that. Certainly appreciate it. Well, today is actually the first day in about two weeks that I have not had a job lined up for the grapple truck. It has been staying steadily busy, uh, lots of work for that piece of equipment and it's doing really, really well. But since there's nothing going on with the grapple truck today, I need to take advantage of this day and get some work done here in the yard. I'm gonna get this load of pin oak cut up today. We may even take the box wedge off the 1222, throw the four way on and start splitting some of it as well. But before we can do that, I've got a little bit of a catastrophe here in the yard that I need to uh, clean up and fix up before we can even run the splitter. So I'll take you, I'll show you that and I'll take you around and show you one of the issues that I normally run into this time of year, so stick around. So here is this load of pin oak that I want to get all cut up today. We'll at least get this cut. We'll see how far we can get how the day goes with as far as splitting it goes. But uh, we definitely want to get this cut up. I do want to apologize right up here up front at the beginning of the video for the wind. It is a very, very breezy day here today in Maryland. It's beautiful. It's sunny and 75, which is pretty, pretty good because it's been so hot. Uh, but if the wind gets in the mic, I do apologize for that. I'll try to get it that out. But as I'm walking you around here, it's probably going to hit the mic. So here is the catastrophe next to the splitter. You can see what has happened here. We've had a collapse. And this is a two-faced cord of cherry. The pallet fell. My solar-powered floodlight that I have on there came down with the pallet. Fortunately, it missed. There's no damage. It didn't hit the cooler there or the fan, uh, so I got lucky there. But this is just another problem that these rows present and kind of confirms to me what we talked about last week as far as getting away from stack, stacked rows. You can see over here, this row has collapsed in on the other row, fell to the inside, which I guess is the best case scenario. It didn't fall out to the ground, so I don't have to pick it up again. It's just gonna have to kind of sit like that until we load it for delivery. But this time of year, this is what happens. As this wood dries and shrinks, it tends to move a little bit. And let me set you up over here. You can kind of see what I'm talking about if I can get you along the edge of this row. Let me get the camera adjusted for you. But this is what happens. And what I normally have to do this time of year and throughout the summer is come along with my hips and kind of stand it back up because it starts leaning out or leaning in as the sun's hitting it and it's drying, it shifts a little bit. So this is what's going on. Those of you that stack your wood probably have similar issues. Uh, but before I can run the splitter, obviously I gotta get that pallet off of it. So we'll start cutting this, we'll get the 500 eye out, start cutting on this, and when we get to that point, we're gonna have to do something over here.
There it is, that whole load is now cut up and ready for splitting. We're gonna walk over here and get this collapse zone taken care of. Probably just throw all that off on the side and get the pallet squared away and then restack it. I guess that's what I'm gonna do. But that load that's been laying on the ground is now done. I did have to sharpen the chain one time in the middle. It just wasn't I don't know if I hit something or not, I don't think I did, but it just wasn't cutting up to my standards and I feel like when, you, when your saw gets dull, you're better off to stop and take the time to put an edge back on it and keep cutting. I would venture to say that you probably save time by stopping and sharpening your saw than you would if you just kept trying to muscle it through. It's not good for the saw, it makes the saw run hot get your bar hot and uh, just not good for the engine on the, on the saw either. I would be curious, I wouldn't do it to my own saw, but I would be curious if you could have some equal diameter wood and have somebody start on say three or four different logs with a dull chain, then have somebody with the same three or four diameter logs. When the dull saw starts cutting, the other guy starts sharpening his saw once his saw gets sharp, he starts cutting his logs and see who gets done quicker. Now obviously if you only had one log or something, it might, might not work out. But if you've got a whole load of logs, I'd be willing to bet that if you, if you take the time to sharpen your saw, you actually save time in the end. I'm going to start ripping this pile apart, get this pallet fixed up, and then we'll hopefully start splitting. There we go. Good as new. I uh, repaired the, this side the most. You can see this metal. These are the top braces for the IBC totes that hold the tank in. I repurposed those and used those as my support braces. But where it came apart was right up here because I just had it screwed into this very thin slat and eventually just broke out. So I screwed a two by four long ways, connecting the two support braces of the pallet, and then screwed the support brace to the two by four. So that's a lot more secure now. But there has been a change of plans. We're not gonna get to run the splitter today, and I'll tell you why. So in the beginning of the video, I told you that this was the first day in two weeks that the grapple truck hasn't had work to do. Well, got a telephone call a few minutes ago and that has changed. Uh, one of the contractors that we, that supports us and that has used us already a couple times called and there's a house clean out, a bunch of stuff and trash, debris that's gotta go to the landfill. So we do that as well. It's not just firewood and logs and trees and stumps, it's debris removal as well. 
uh, which is a very lucrative thing as well, I believe. You know, these people that rent dumpsters when they clean out houses and stuff, it's a lot more expensive to rent a dumpster and you have to load it yourself than it is to call us, put it in a pile outside, we show up, scoop it up, load it on our truck, and away we go. So as people are finding out about this service, I think it's just gonna continue to get even more busy. But that's where I'm headed now. I'm supposed to be there in about an hour, so I'll go get the truck and uh, get that job done. So we will have to split another day. But good news is we got these pallets fixed up and we got that load all cut up. So we will see you back here next Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Thank you all for joining us. I appreciate all the new subscribers that have been coming on. Things had kind of slowed down there for a while. And uh, here recently, I know we picked up about 20 or 25 in the last week or so. So if you're watching this, welcome. We're glad to have you here. And we'll see you again next Wednesday. Have a great week, everybody.